There's nowhere lazier than a cow town in central Florida. A peaceful cluster of dilapidation where folk can meander. Kissimmee, frontier town with a gallop in bar. It's that kind of a place. Nothing much ever happens. Except the morning train to Tampa. Should it ever drop a passenger? It seems like rush hour, and people start wondering what's up. What's up right now is so unusual that Kissimmee will never be the same again. This place is about to be pixelated. And no one around here is quite sure whether that's a good thing to be. But, good or bad, it's a revolutionary, a cataclysmic process involving 100 million pounds and 10 million people. And that's just for this year. So, right now, I'm off to see the wizardry. You can see why it's called Orange County, yet all these trees are about to disappear. The lazy days are almost over, and those groves will soon look like this. On a site bigger than Manchester, a spread of swamp and woodland 80 times the size of Hyde Park, they're building a fantasy for 125 million pounds. This is the house the mouse built, the two million pound centerpiece of Walt Disney World the biggest thing to hit Florida since sunshine. Cinderella's castle, a fiberglass inspiration that looks real from any distance, should this be your idea of reality. On October the 1st, Mickey Mouse, aged 43, opens his billion dollar business here, an improbable dream of Disney Imagineers to cater for 10,000 visitors an hour, 50,000 a day, 10 million a year and so solve many Americans' worries about expanding leisure time and surplus cash. The first year's take should be 40 million pounds. Amid a profusion of whimsy, nothing's what it seems to be. It's all fiberglass and clever paint. They even build trees branch by branch, vinyl leaves upon a steel skeleton. But there's nothing up in the air about Disney's accountants who've calculated each visiting family should spend around 40 pounds for their day out in an unreal world where man-made animals and dead presidents controlled by computers will move and talk. Life dehumanized but frighteningly imitated by audio animatronics. We're walking down our main street now, USA, and this is an old, old town during the 1890s. And all these little stores and shops here will be open for business. I just swallowed one of your flies. <laughs> oh, that's, that's an audio animatronic fly. We don't have flies. We don't have real flies. No. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's a bogus street, but it's quite enchanting, of course. Oh, uh, yes. We'll have boutiques, we'll have ice cream shops, and we'll have card shops, an emporium where you can buy anything, Mickey Mouse hat, shirt, anything. Down at the end of our main street here, you see the train station. This is where our guests will first enter into Walt Disney World. Pre-digested nostalgia across an area 90 times larger than the Californian Disneyland, where outside promoters made four times Disney's profit from his crowds. So here in Florida, he bought 27,000 acres to keep his customers captive in five giant resort hotels. They'll play here and they'll stay here for 15 pounds a day without food. Hotels perfectly sighted, of course, straddling artificial lakes with man-made islands. Visitors will arrive by boat or by this sky highway, travelling by high-speed monorail through the biggest private construction enterprise in the world. 
Silent trains will run right through this grand canyon of a hotel lobby, soon to be a landscaped park with trees. A thousand prefabricated rooms built down the road were just slotted in. There'll also be four motels, a city of tomorrow for 20,000 people, 200 ships on five lakes, a couple of railways, and a wholesome tribe of 100 all-American hostesses. We have what we call a University of Walt Disney World. What do you do at the university? We learn a great deal about Walt Disney, what his thinking was, what his philosophy was, and that's where we get our pixie dust. The most important thing is, is to learn exactly what this is all about, what Walt wanted, and that's, that's the most important thing. What about this pixie dust? Huh? How does it show itself? Oh, pixie dust is, I think, just a feeling that you get. Remember in the story of Peter Pan when Tinkerbell flew down and sprinkled pixie dust? Everyone could fly. Everyone had this feeling. They, and I think that's what pixie dust is with us. We, when we think of spreading it, we think of spreading happiness and, and the Disney feeling throughout the employees and throughout the, the guests. The other thing that I'm impressed by coming here, and that is that Walt Disney is about to be deified, really. It's going to be St. Walt in, in 25 years' time, I'm sure. Oh, I, I because think Because your eyes be... light up when you talk about it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's, to me, he's my life. <laughs> he really is. He's, he's given me seven wonderful years that I, I couldn't have gotten without Walt Disney and what he's created. We're ready to go out and tear the world up. We're ready to tell everybody. And that's what we call pixie dust. It's just just something we have that we spread. So how do you get it? And why can't I have some? You've got it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know? <laughs> you mean it's coming down it's all, all the time? Over you. Yes, oh boy. It is. <laughs> It's either giving people a chance to, to be themselves or to regress into childhood, really. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's so innocent. It's unbelievable, really, isn't it? Well, people are, people are so afraid to do what they want to do. But here, or at Disneyland, they can do anything they want to do. They're not afraid to laugh or to sit down on the floor or do anything they want. It's just the atmosphere, you know. Because, for one thing, the employees, which I am, they're doing the same things. You'll see us kidding around the floor all the time, and sometimes it gets a little out of hand, I think, but most of the time, everybody joins in, you know, and it's, it's just fun. And that's part of the excitement, too. We're special people. Like, this company is a first-name company. Roy Disney, we call him Roy. And they'll correct you every time if you call him Mr. Disney or Mr. Tatum. And that doesn't that make you feel good? It does me, just to know that, that I'm special enough to, to call the big man that. Is this part of the costume? The watch? Yes. No, we get, we get those ourselves, but we can wear them. And most all the girls do. He's sort of our patron saint. Yes, he is, actually. And I notice that Walt Disney is being almost deified or sanctified, isn't he? One sees his photograph placed discreetly in various places, like a shrine almost. I think it's due. I really do. Myself, if I could meet anybody in the world, or could have met, I think he'd be the one. Of course, I work here, and I've, I've grown to love him more and more. But I think he has his place as one of the greatest Americans ever. Worship inspired by a sort of genius whose sweet vision of innocence spun fantasies, reconciled generations, awakened old dreams, but never forgot the hard sell. And the important thing is that the Disney World is located just a few miles from the crossing point of Interstate 4 and Sunshine State Parkway. Disney died of cancer five years ago, but does not go short of memorials. At his Californian university, this Welshman was an instructor. My responsibility was to uh, uh, perhaps use the word indoctrinate the new employees when they first arrived with the company and put them through a four-hour orientation program. This was to make them uh, have the right attitudes and right presentation and to uphold the image of the company. Now, what is the right attitude? Um, the right attitude is one of uh, um, perhaps uh, mimicking what most people call the all-American person, the uh, smiling, youthful, full of energy, uh, young man or woman. And uh, to have clean attitudes and smiling uh, words and smiling phrases. This is this pixie dust thing, is it? This is the pixie dust thing, yes. So I suppose that people may be brainwashed more easily if they've been selected carefully in the first place. What's the problem of selection? Well, first of all, you're screened to make sure that you fit the Disney image, that you don't have spots, your hair's not too long, uh, you present 
uh, an attractive appearance. Beginning to sound as though I couldn't get a job with the Disney organism. Probably not. You'd have to do quite a bit of renovation. <laughs> what? <laughs> what would I have to do? Uh, shave off your moustache, yeah. your sideburns, have a haircut. But it's just like going into the army. <laughs> It's too um, much. What else? Anything else? Uh, your glasses, you're probably... Uh, if you were behind the scenes, it wouldn't matter so much. But if you're in front of the public, you shouldn't really wear glasses. No glasses. And also, it would help to polish up your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, no limps. No limps. No limps. <laughs> well, at least I don't limp. No pimples. <laughs> no pimples. No, that's all right. And your general standard of dress has to be... Uh, it can be... Uh, perhaps very much freer than, than, than in Britain, but yes. conservative by American standards. You mean a tie? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. As you're dressed now, which would be perfectly acceptable for most um, uh, supervisory positions. Oh, good. I think you'd, you'd pass, really, you know, after you've been to the bar, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> well, what's he got against moustaches? Uh, Walt Disney wore a moustache. This I can never understand. Yes, yes. Walt, Walt uh, wore a moustache, and... Uh, uh, the thing is, though, it's uncontrollable. This is the point. Uh, once you uh, allow an infringement of the sort of basic rules, you would find the moustache would become a long walrus moustache or something like this. And um, the whole attitude is not only to um, appear neat and tidy, but also clean. The uh, um, compensation is uh, the, the pixie dust, the fact that you are honored and respected in the community and you automatically become a, a, uh, um, uh, an accepted social person. So it seems that I'm an untouchable, as far as Disney's concerned, on just about every count. These encyclopedias are their backstage Bibles, confidential instructions to their executives from the Disneyland University out in California, where they manufacture the pixie dust. And, for example, here's some instructions, some commandments, one might say, about the Disneyland look. Hair, neatly trimmed and tapered at the sides and back. Height of the hair from the crown of the head should not exceed one inch. Shaving eyebrows is considered an extreme and is not permitted. Sideburns should be neatly trimmed and should not extend below mid-ear. Moustaches are not permitted. No beards will be allowed in the park. Men are requested to wear black shoes and black socks. The only jewellery to be worn, watches and approved tie clips. An approved tie clip is one with Mickey Mouse on it. A blueprint of the future is about to be stamped upon Trank Wilkissimi with its 23 churches and pious senior citizens, all about to be overwhelmed by Disney's eager army offering instant happiness to millions of tourists. These gentlefolk are still unaware, I suspect, of the magnitude of this coming invasion. Don't tell me that, am I? Disney's presented bemused Floridians with the wildest statistics since space flight. His incredible playground will generate 80,000 jobs, 3,000 million pounds in cash, 1,000 new hotels, restaurants, service stations. In the land rush, a one-acre lot has just sold for 125,000 pounds. And Disney has 7,000 hard hats on the job with a payroll of half a million pounds a week. Before they appeared, Johnny's Corner did a daily business of just... Ten dollars. Uh, I believe that's right. Isn't that, isn't that right? When that's probably right. Out? Start now. What sort of business do you reckon you're doing now? Well, it's we're doing uh, we're doing oh I'd say what 40, 40, 50 times that much. You're cashing a lot of checks, I see. On yeah, that's right. Yeah. What sort of amount would you cash? Oh, we'd probably around twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. How has the business changed here, apart from multiplying forty or fifty times? How the how the customers changed? Everything now is, is, is uh, construction workers. I mean, I'd say 99.9% of it's construction workers. Looks to me as though you can't cope with the business, actually. Well, that's about the that's truth it. of it. That's about, that's, that's about the extent of it, it is. <laughs> See, this is the only place around for 10 miles that anybody can get any beer or, or Coca-Cola or anything else. See? Ice, milk, anything. Your bank manager must be smiling more than you are. Yeah, well, they, they smile every once in a while, I think. A forced smile, though, from the rancher who almost missed out on the boom. 
Senator Erle Bronson did business with Disney's original buyers when they first tiptoed into the state seven years ago, snapping up land in various company names before revealing their master plan. You sold most of the land that Disney has now in Disney World to him. Do you wish you hadn't? No, sir. You got, I'm told, that it cost Disney an average of $187 an acre. That's probably about right on this whole outfit. But now it's selling for about $60,000 an acre, isn't it? Some of it in some <laughs> areas. Don't you feel maybe that uh, you lost a few chances there? Well, my dad told me a long time ago, don't ever look back. You make a mistake. It's always just as good ahead if you know how to work it. And did you? Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're still selling land, are you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see, but of course not to Disney, to the operators oh, on the outside. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How much land do you have left, Mr. Brunson? About 100,000 acres. Oh, well. That, uh, I can see why you've got a solid gold Cadillac now. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've been down here in these 15 years, how have prices changed? Well, we went uh, from... $50 an acre, some of it even as low as $25 an acre. And that same property today is selling up as high as $10,000 to $15,000, $20,000 an acre. It's a neat profit, uh, if you can get it. It's been it. very steady. It's been very steady. But this goodness. boom must have brought in a lot of very suspect operators in your line of country. Not as many as people predicted or thought. They, uh, you'll probably see more of those as we as we as we become more populated as the other developments start mm -hmm. that's when the real promoter and that type gets in this is still pretty straight you know most of the people in the area and in the banks and everything else right. but that's i mean everyone's had five years warning i would have thought the, the, uh, uh, the con artists would have been in here five years ago public weren't here though you I only see. had the, the the natives and you're not about if i may use the expression to con the natives not no way these are pretty sharp individuals, these cowboys. Yes. yes. They're not going to be taken quickly. So you think this, the, the quick money operators will be starting to come in now? Right. Now they'll start. But I've been hearing some extraordinary stories even now, people buying swamp land over the telephone. Well, you well, know, this is true, that. but there's always that type in every business, and uh, we do have some that are selling by mail and and telephone, uh, telephone, hotline telephone, what they call watch lines. They run what you call a boiler room operation. They may have 10 or tw uh, 15 uh, salesmen on the telephone calling Mrs. Jones in Wisconsin and saying, I've got a marvelous thing for you. I understand you own property near so-and-so. Well, I've got some 120 miles from Walt Disney World, an acre and a quarter for only $9,000. Now, that's marvelous. You could come to Florida and vacation there and then go see Disney. But they told them it was 125 miles away. I mean, I've got an ad I just pulled out of the paper that reads just like that. And the contract reads, this land is not going to be used for anything but floodwaters. Then they're foolish enough to sign it. They, des they deserve to lose it. What can you say? See, a lot of people think they can't, they can't go wrong here, it would seem to me. Is this true, that you can't lose money buying land in a place like this? Well, we don't feel that you can lose money. We're investing all we can find uh, into land here yet. It's almost possible that you can almost throw a dart on the wall within a 25-mile radius of the Disney property and know that you're going to have a good investment, in, in, if not uh, in one year, at least in ten. It'll happen. It'll right. be here. Sounds like you've got a nice, quiet little place here, actually. Well, let's start it. I mean, this is boom, boom town, and uh, actually what's going to happen is everything is going to step up. I mean, every year, as we get closer to Disney's opening in, in October, the pace will pick up. Then the thousands or the millions of people, they're talking about a million people a month coming into the area, and you've never had a million people in this area in a year, much less a month. So you imagine what's going to happen. This is, this is going to be... Boom Boom Town USA is what it amounts to. So it's Boom Boom time and the pickings are sweet. Though soon the only orange tree around here will be in Disney World with plastic fruit, no doubt. On the sidelines of this show that's about to begin, the residents of threatened backwaters have just started to erect their defenses. We're going to have to learn to live with it and plan to try to keep our tranquility. We still want to keep it a 
one of the best residential areas in the county. But how do you keep tranquility when you're getting 10 or 12 million people? <laughs> it's hard. How do you do that? It's a neat trick. It's very hard. We uh, just do the best we can. And we don't want to pave the streets. We don't want to change anything. We don't want to widen the streets or pave. The only uh, change we're going to have, I guess, will be... Um, people. People, yes. Somebody was forecasting 25-mile traffic jams, I noticed. Well, I just say, wait and see. <laughs> we can have... Well, what about the policeman? Is, he, is, it, is it one policeman, or have you got more than one? We have two now. Two. <laughs> and we'll probably have three before the end of the year. Oh, yeah. That'll frighten them. <laughs> <laughs> Most of Windermere's residents retired to these peaceful waters to discover Disney looks down on them. You can see the big contemporary hotel within sight of our own front yard. And right there, five miles from where I'm pointing, there's a city of 80,000 being planned. And when that city goes up, it will go up all at one time. The shopping centers, the hotels, the motels, the residences, the city hall, everything's gonna be built at once. Then three miles further down the road is the largest industrial center in Florida being built. And that will have perhaps 100,000 people. Now, when you get lots of people added in the neighborhood of a little village of 312 registered voters, it's going to have some effect on us, and we'd rather be left alone. Now, Disney is going to bring a lot of money to Florida. Economically, it's a great thing for the state. But personally, and now I have a lot of friends in Disney, and I hope you don't show this film where my friends will see it, but I wish they had built Disney World just about another 150 miles in the direction I'm pointing, and then we would be happy like all the businessmen are happy. I can see this beautiful lake mile after mile as busy as a serpentine in London. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Where people would be rowing little canoes around, and, yeah. and the boats would be bumper to bumper. My favorite pastime is to come out here in the middle of the afternoon in this boat and turn the motor off, and sit and drift and read a book all afternoon. Wow. While Gladys yeah. sits over there and works a crossword puzzle or reads a book, we get a lot of think time. That's why we moved to Windermere from Washington, D.C. We have think time. Disney, it seems to me, is going to make a lot of money for 5% of the people and just be merely an inconvenience for the other 95. Well, now, I don't know the percentages, but somewhere down the line that is true. Now, one thing that we're pretty sure of, within the next... 15 years. Now, you'll talk to people in Orlando who will tell you three years, five years, but within the next 15 years, Orlando area will be the largest area in Florida. This will be larger than Miami. <laughs> That's a good life. Well, we like the life here. That's why we want to keep it this way. We want to keep the lakes clean enough so that five years from now, that same little girl can water ski behind the boat safely and not have it so polluted that she doesn't dare go swimming in it. Now, right now, you can drink this water. This is the price of progress, but you're getting your progress in one big dollar, aren't you? The only thing wrong with progress, it never stops. So Kissimmee's transformation begins. Main Street into Motel and Hot Dog Strip. Cow Town into Mouse Town, with all the signs of progress. To cope with cup final traffic arriving every day of the year, a new network of magnificent highways, which will surely be inadequate, and for meandering folk, a noisy no-man's land. Well, good morning. Got a small problem this morning and had to meet outdoors. Bigger problems are on the way for the Windermere Rotary, which today can still enjoy its 7 a.m. breakfast gathering by a quiet country lane. Our mayor. We have doubled the size of our sewage treatment facility. Uh, we've uh, more than doubled our water production uh, capacity and treatment ability. We've more than doubled our electric generation and distribution capability. Of course, the big problem uh, is money. You see, Disney's taken all the goodies and given Orlando and Kissimmee all the problems. 
They're not building jails or hospitals, we have to. They're not building schools, we have to. Which means that our area's got to pay for their, for their goody-goody land operation, which is exactly what it amounts to. They're taking the profits. They are taking the profit, yes. They've they, got to, they, and the, they and the uh, real estate agents. Well, I, we wouldn't say that. I'd say the investors. We're just helping out a little bit. Their private part is over. In a fantastic fallout of pixie dust, the audio animatronic animals are on the march. Central Florida is about to be asphyxiated. Born on the mountaintop, Tennessee, the greenest state in the land of the free. Raised in the woods so he knew every tree. Killed him a bar when he was only three. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. <laughs> 